So maybe you've asked yourself, what's it like to work in the maintenance department at a plastic injection molding factory for an automotive parts supplier? Well, other than the fact that uh, you hear the forklift driving in reverse constantly, that backup alarm is always going off, and the maintenance cage is not air conditioned, so you've got to have the fan running just to get some air circulation back here. And every time I try to film a video, somebody decides they want to come back here and interrupt me. Let me give you an idea of something that I do. So this is what they call a grinder. It's more or less like a wood chipper, but for plastic runners. Plastic runners are the leftover parts. After you in injection mold your part, you have these leftover pieces and they become scrap plastic. And depending on what kind of parts you're running, what grade of plastic you're using, you can actually grind up the plastic and reuse it in the next shot going through the injection molding machine to make parts, or you can grind it up and ship it out to be reconstituted and, and resold. And you say, well, why wouldn't you just send the runners out the way they are? Well, if you grind up runners, you could turn six boxes of full-size runners into one box. So it's really good for consolidating space because the weight really isn't a factor when a semi truck is pulling a trailer load of this stuff. And if you want to reuse it in the next shot on, on producing plastic parts, if you're set up for that, it's gotta be ground up in order to go down into the barrel of the injection molding machine and being, be melted uh, to, to go into the mold to form the part. You can't just throw uh, big runners in there and uh, expect them to, to break down and melt. So today I'm doing a monthly PM on all of our grinders. Now I've never done a monthly PM on these before. There's a simple instruction sheet and I told my boss I would take care of it. It's not really that big of a deal. I'm gonna have to start doing this as part of my regular uh, monthly uh, PM. A PM is preventative maintenance. More or less, you're trying to catch a problem before it happens. So you're doing things like, you know, greasing it, cleaning it, changing filters, doing safety checks on, on things like, like this emergency stop right here or something, or on one of the safety switches. But you're also trying to catch something before it breaks or before it wears out. So part of my preventative maintenance is to check the oil in the gearbox. And with that, I ran into a slight problem. Let me explain. So first I've got to open this up. You can see, here's all these knives. These are actually removable. They'll wear out. You can see some of them are chipped up here. The plastic drops down in here and this thing spins around and just chops them to pieces. They fall into a hopper in the bottom and then they're pulled out uh, occasionally by vacuum pressure. So there's a gearbox over here for these and we're supposed to check the gear oil level in there. Well, looking on the sides, the gearbox, top, and the other, well, I can't get to the other side from where I'm at, but typically there's a thing called a sight glass. And this gearbox doesn't have a sight glass. Let me give you an example of a sight glass. So here we have our scissor lift. We use this to get up into, into high places here in the, in the plant. And if you pull this tab, you can move out this compartment here. And this is the hydraulic reservoir for the, just like what I was talking about, somebody came back here. So let me show you what a sight glass looks like. That's the sight glass. You can see it says to use automatic transmission fluid and that red color denotes the automatic transmission fluid. So you can see if you've got too much or too little, most of the time there's going to be a mark, uh, upper and lower level, or there's going to be something in the instruction manual saying that you want it halfway or something like that. And that's not the only way to check the oil in a gearbox. Sometimes you physically actually just put your little finger inside the, the fill hole and if you can fill it, well, then uh, you've got enough oil in there. Sort of rule of thumb, I guess you could say. A little bad attempt at a pun. So here we are over on the other side of the gearbox. You can see there's a little plug there, but there, there is no sight glass. So there's no way externally to see how much fluid is in there. There's also not a refill cap. I mean, this, this plug right here, uh, that might be, 
it might be part of a drain plug, I'm not really too sure, but there's no refill cap for me to, to put a finger in or just to open up and look in there. So we've got this cover here, and I went ahead and I, I took loose four of the six hex cap screws holding it in. I've already got loosened up. So I, what I did was I, I went scouring through my boss's office looking for the manual on this. Couldn't find the manual. This thing is imported. You're not going to find a manual online for it. And I didn't want to call my boss. I've got enough experience fixing machines. I should be able to figure this out. So my guess is it's got to be underneath this cover. And one of the first indications to me that it is, I didn't have a lot of effort to take these screws out. That means they've come, uh, they've been taken out before. So the cover, it's just a simple piece of uh, what they call pot steel. It's porous steel. And there is a rubber gasket here. What I want to make sure is that the rubber gasket isn't torn or folded up or anything else like that. And when I took one of these off, the rubber gasket was attached to the back side. So that's another problem. You may end up taking something like this off and tearing the gasket because half of it wants to stick to the cover and half of it wants to stick to the gearbox. You see there's a big gear in there and you can see the oil. It might look a little bit dark. That's really more the, the uh, camera. It's actually not, not really that dark. I don't know if this uh, flashlight will help, but it's really light color. It's about halfway up, which rule of thumb, once again, about halfway is where it at, is at for the oil level in most gearboxes. And since I don't have any instruction manual to tell me otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and call it good. So this is just something that I have to do at my job. Try to use some of my past experience and some common sense and muddle through the fact that we really don't have a very good... <laughs> we don't really have a good technical technical resource here and the training here is uh, well it could use some work too and one more thing about this that I forgot I went ahead and I put all these in hand tight sometimes when you're doing a cover on something where you've got to put in multiple bolts in a, in a manual there'll be a, a pattern it'll tell you it'll be numbered and there'll be some way to orient it so that you know which way is up in what order they want you to tighten these things down because if you tighten just one of them down and then you work your way around you'll end up tightening it uneven even though there's a gasket in there what you want to do typically is a crisscross pattern so if you've got a manual and it gives you a torque value to set a torque wrench to and it's got a pattern you want to follow that without that you just have to kind of use a little common sense so we'll tighten this down just snug then we'll go all the way over here snug over here snug snug See, just a simple crisscross pattern nothing to it and then as far as tightening it down not enough to strip the threads not enough to crack this pot steel and just kind of do a crisscross make sure it's nice and tight and that ought to be all you need to do and that's part of what it's like to be in plant maintenance an automotive factory where you're trying to show some sort of degree of uh, proficiency and professionalism. Thanks for watching. So here's a box. We call these Gaylords. So here's a Gaylord full of runners. Okay, you see it's on a 4x4 four four pallet. Takes up some space. Now here, here's a Gaylord where we've ground up the runners. Call it regrind. You see, you can fit a lot more in there because you've broken it up. So you can see down in there, that's all the plastic that's gotten chewed up. You just drop it in there, and it just gets chewed up. 